the Yorkshire Cup first game between the Humberside Seahawks and the Sheffield Steelers Premier Division against First Division the Steelers currently in second place in the Heineken First Division against a side who are looking for Wembley for the first time around but this is the first game of the Humberside Ice Arena and here's Shudra with the first shot on net and he scores he slides into the boards on left wing and goes and gets to be congratulated by Scott Neal and by Les Milley. Ron Shudra opens the scoring for the Sheffield Steelers with some help from Steve Nemeth. So the first division side in the lead. And the Sheffield Steelers fans in good voice. Obviously pretty animated at that early score for Ron Tudor for the Sheffield Steelers. A lot of fight though left, I'm sure, in the Humberside Seahawks players in this game. Not going to want to let the Steelers take too much of an early march on them. Nemeth plays it back looking for Mackey. Mackey picks it up on halfway. Back to rock-solid Tudor on defence through the middle to Nemeth. Let's one go. Acrobatic stop there by the Humberside Seahawks netminder comes back to Scott Neal Neal to Shudra Shudra slips it through the middle looking for Les Milley to pick up on it Milley has support arriving in the centre from Mackey there's Mackey pass goes astray from the stick of Les Milley played back in by Shudra back again to Les Milley Kevin McNaught tries to clear down the ice with a scramble in front of net Shudra lines one up again Nemeth Shudra slots it through the centre for the final touch to be applied by Scott Neal. Not much chance for the Humberside defence on that well worked move by Shudra. Neal getting the final touch. And surprisingly, the early stages 13 47 gone. Sheffield Steelers lead the Humberside Seahawks by two goals to nil. Let's see whether the Seahawks can pull back from this. 2 nothing down in the first period of the first leg of the Yorkshire Cup between the Premier Division outfit and the First Division side. Dale Lambert gets dispossessed by Les Milley. Milley needs some support. It's arriving in the shape of Tommy Plummer. Plummer to one shooter in front of net. They just carved open the Humberside Seahawks defence. And there was Shudra on hand for the final touch. Ronnie would appreciated that one. Big, broad grin on his face. And I don't think the Seahawks know what's hit them. 3 nothing to the Sheffield Steelers after 15.39. Shudra. On to Nemeth. Nemeth lets one go. Good stop by the Humberside Seahawks netminder. Bishop lets one rip. Havenhand looking for it, went wide of his goal without the helmet, it's Stephen Johnson. Bishop trying to force his way through again. Anthony Johnson back to Bishop and that one's just going to creep through. McNaught I think got the final touch there. McCurry just checking the referee to see that it had crossed the line and who got the final touch. I think McNaught will be credited with that one with an assist, no doubt, from Bishop and from Anthony Johnson. So a goal clawed back for the home side. It's 3-1 to the Sheffield Steelers. Assisted by 3-1 then to the Steelers. At the Humberside Ice Arena. As they look to make their way down the ice, courtesy of the stick of Mike Bishop over the blue line over halfway let one go from long distance Haven hand is equal to that one and Sean Johnson trying to play it into the path of Anthony Johnson does and he gets the final touch not much that can be done about that one it's going to be credited to Sean Johnson I think but all the Johnson brothers involved in that move Anthony Johnson will take the plaudits of the crowd along with his two brothers, because the Homicide Seahawks back in it at 
3 2 then to the Seahawks. In the second period of the Humberside Ice Arena. Play through the middle now. Great chance for Stephen Johnson. Good save by Haverhand going to his right to stop that one sneaking through. But it'll be a penalty shot. So says Mick Curry. Mick Curry saw the player upended with a good scoring opportunity as he saw it. So the Humberside Seahawks will pick up a penalty shot. Ron Shudra having a few words with Mick Curry. Obviously none too happy about that situation. But nothing's going to change. So he's just going to have to get on with it. A chance on the penalty shot opportunity for Stephen Johnson to bury it. Andy Heaven has to try and guess. He can't. He's rounded. And the captain of the Humberside Seahawks, Stephen Johnson, buries it in the back of the net. And we're all square at 3-3. Three, three. An important goal for the Seahawks. Gets them back on level terms after being 3-0 down. Now they're looking to try and get in front for the first time in the game. Kevin McNaught loses the puck. Scott Neal plays it through. Assist from Plummer through to Millie on the far side looking for that one. Stuart Carvel try and play it down the ice. Tommy Plummer will let it go. Line change. Sean Johnson sniffing around, so too his brother Anthony, and it surely comes up with it. Stephen gets the shot away. Stephen Johnson with Anthony Johnson back to Sean Johnson. Shot gets past the defenseman in front and the goalie behind into the corner of the net. And the Premier Division side now making their opportunities an advantage tell as the Humberside Seahawks edge in front by four goals to three. Face off to be contested by Mark Mackey for the Sheffield Steelers. Shot comes in from Steve Nemeth, just high and wide. And the play up again. Rebound comes back to the stick of Captain Ron Shudra, his third of the night. Slots it past the despairing lunge of the Humberside Seahawks netminder. And it's as you were, back all square again. Sheffield Steelers make it four. It's 4-4 four -four in the Yorkshire Cup. First leg. So still all the play for. Nothing to separate these two sides of them. Now Shudra takes it down the ice. Tries to get the shot away. Deflection on route. Dale Lambert slides it along the boards. Eventually picked up by Ronnie Wood. Shudra back on defence. Plays it through. Now an opportunity opening up for Mike Bishop, who buries it in the left-hand corner of the net. Humberside Seahawks in the latter stages of the game take the lead again. They're 5-4 in front. Looking to take that advantage into the second leg at the Sheffield Arena. Mike Bishop, the big man on defence, has a big shot when he goes forward to and Andy Havenhan can do nothing about that, buried in the corner of the net. And the Humberside Seahawks, 5-4 in front. That's the stage of the game. Ashley Johnson has a chance to put it beyond doubt. Les Millie. Millie across to Scott Neal, head down, looking for the support to arrive from Shudra. Shudra across the face, Millie. Rebound nearly fell back to his stick. Tommy Plummer waiting up front. The goal has been dislodged intentionally. We'll have to wait and see whether Mick Curry thinks so, because if he does, it'll be a penalty shot for the Sheffield Steelers. We've seen one already in this game, which was taken by Stephen Johnson and converted. But if he believes that was done intentionally, then it'll be a penalty shot to the Steelers. And that's exactly what he's telling the players surrounding him is going to be the case. How often do you see a penalty shot in a game? Very rare you see two penalty shots in a game. But Ron Shudra now has a chance to tie things up. Scott Neal's quite happy about that. A little chat on the bench as uh, Anthony Johnson and he exchange a few words. Great Britain internationals both. The alternate captain of the Sheffield Steelers. 
Discussing that last incident and probably some other things besides. But now Ron Tudor, with just seconds remaining on the game, has a chance to put Sheffield Steelers back on level terms at 5-5 with hardly any time remaining for the winning goal for either side. Tudor, big, long, rangy run. Takes it through. But he'll be the hero of the night. Frankie Killen, no doubt about that. Got in between Shudra and the shot. Stopped it sneaking through. They appreciate the sterling efforts of the former Durham and Billingham netminder. And the Humberside Seahawks breathe again. Last few seconds of the game. Shudra trying to atone for that mistake. That nearly sneaked through for late equaliser for the Steelers. But that's the end of the action for the first match. So the Premier Division side have drawn first blood in this three-match encounter between the Humberside team and the South Yorkshire team. Daryl Lambert, the man who's masterminded Humberside Seahawks rise to the top of the Premier Division. He's happy about that, but that's the man who's given them that lead with his penalty shot saved towards the end, Frankie Kellen. So the Seahawks take a 5-4 advantage into the second game at the Sheffield Arena. That should be a closely fought contest as well. An animated midweek Sheffield Steelers crowd getting themselves in the mood for another Yorkshire Cup battle between the Steelers and the Humberside Seahawks, this time back on home territory. 5-4 to the Seahawks in the first game. And they say that for the Steelers, home advantage means at least a two-goal start with the atmosphere and the rink and just everything encompassing this great venue. But it's the Seahawks who get the first opportunity on that. That one nearly sliding through. But stopped en route by Andy Havenhand. First time he's been tested in this game. Bill Lee just there to help him out if help was needed. Face-off to be taken with Andy Steele heading right down in the face-off circle. He'll come back for the shot with him on the turn. And it's Andy Steele who gets the final touch away. And Andy Havenhand can do nothing about that at all. Lodges itself in the right-hand corner of his net. And the shot coming in, gets a deflection, and then on the turn, Andy Steele pokes it away for number one. Stephen Johnson will contest this face-off against Mark Mackey. Mackey wins it, gets it in the second attempt. Play it through, shot on net, rebound comes back to Les Milley, who just pokes it away, in fine style from close range. Put Poacher's goal. He gets it in the second attempt and controlled it well. It's 1-1 in the second leg of the Yorkshire Cup. Nothing much separating these two sides. Just one goal between them over two legs so far. Millie tries to feed it through to Mackey on the return. There's Millie waiting for it again out in front of the net. Mackey takes a shot from an acute angle. And then Minder gets in between him and the goal. Stephen Emmeth looking for another angle to open up this time. Dixon back to Shudra. Shudra buries it. That's where he's so dangerous, the captain of the Sheffield Steelers, just showing his great range from just inside the blue line. Opens up, lets it rip. And the first that uh, the netminder for Humberside knew about it when he saw it in the back of the net. Stephen Johnson trying to win that face off up against Tim Cranston. Cranston on the chase. Looking to intercept on rope, but Bishop will have it. Bishop slides it into the path of Anthony Johnson, who gets the final touch to add to his accumulating tally of goals this year in the Premier Division and indeed in the Yorkshire Cup. Bishop has got a deflection, and they're ready to pounce. It was Anthony Johnson for number two. I try and win the face off, they do. There's Andy Steele, got plenty of room to move. An open net virtually. Second goal of the game for Andy Steele, the third of the night for the Humberside Seahawks. 
And after that challenge, he was virtually on his own. Nothing much that Paul Dixon could do about that. Now an opportunity opening up for Steve Nemeth. Didn't quite get through this time. Millie tries on the turn, tries again. Has Mackey arriving in the centre for the rebound. Trying to slot it through again. Three attempts in close succession, but they make it in the end. And that was real persistence by the front men for the Sheffield Steelers. Millie, Mackey and Nemeth. Somehow, some way, they were going to get that puck in there. And eventually they did. Much to the delight of the Sheffield Steelers fans. Now here's Millie. Bring it up from his own end. Rides one challenge well. Might take it all the way. Got to ball arriving from Mackey in the centre. Doesn't need it because Nemeth buries it in the back of the net. And the Sheffield Steelers are now getting into their stride, showing what they've shown most of the teams in Heineken Division 1 this season, and especially this slap shot from Steve Nemeth. Mackey into the path of Nemeth. Tries a little flip return pass. Phil Lee's there in attendance. Les Millie gets the final touch away this time. Really been persistent in this game. Hasn't given up on any 50-50 opportunity. There's always seemed to be in the right place when those rebounds have come back to his stick. Fed through the middle by Mackey. Didn't work first time for Nemeth, but following through was Les Millie. Some help from Mackey. And the return back off the body of the goalie coming to Millie. At home. Sugra. Nemeth. He's done it again. This time the opposite side of the goal. So dangerous when he gets the scoring opportunities and just give him a couple of seconds. Pinpoint accuracy again from Steve Nemeth. Uh, not much the homicide Seahawks netminder could do about that one. Kevin McNaught. Well, I think Andy Havenhand will be feeling he should have done a little better with that one as it slid through into the corner net. And Kevin McNaught just lets one go and got a touch of Havenhand en route. That's the Steelers' turn to try and force the play. Play turned around, but Cranston feeds Scott Neal. He says, thank you very much for that opportunity. And there it is in the back of the net. They're taking their opportunities well from very close range around the front of the net, the Steelers. And they've done it again. This game turning around completely from the early stages when Humberside were in control. And they're enjoying it. Hemeth. Trying to get back to Mackey. Mackey gets it eventually. And Mackey, once again, will give a bit of practice for Humberside's netminder just to pluck that one out the back of the net. A very tight and cagey third period with the Humberside Seahawks looking to get back into this game. Plummer comes back to Tommy Plummer again. Gives it to Paul Dixon. Let's one go. And a good stop this time from the Humberside Seahawks netminder. That's Johnson. Just getting his pad in the right direction. Now Nemeth. Turn it again. Almost identical carbon copy to one of the earlier goals in the game. Nemeth notches up his hat trick. And the Sheffield Steelers have opened up a big margin over the Humberside Seahawks to take into the third game. 9 4, the final score at the arena. Actually, two very contrasting games and two very contrasting performances from your side. That's right, yeah, we didn't play as well tonight as we played uh, last week, but uh, hopefully we can get back to playing the way we did last week next week um, and, and get a win for the final game. Obviously missing Dan Dorian. Yeah, that's a big miss for us. Um, we're playing a lot of the youngsters out there, which is not a bad thing. It's getting them a bit of ice time, which they probably wouldn't normally get. Um, but Dan's one of our key players. He's our ma major goal scorer, so I think we'll be looking to him next week to, to be fully fit and play the game. So, Dean, how did you enjoy your first taste proper of playing at the arena? Oh, I enjoyed myself. I've only got on a couple of times, but when it's a bit of a tight game and it's really important, you can't expect too much, can you, at once? What were your feelings on your first shift? Oh, I was really nervous. Butterflies in the stomach and that. Uh, it's hard to get into it as well. 
when you haven't been on from the start and you're not sweating like everybody else. So it's kind of hard to get into it. The third match in the Yorkshire Cup series between the Sheffield Steelers and the Humberside Seahawks. The Steelers will line up one, Andy Havenhand, two, Paul Dixon, seven, Ronnie Wood, eight, Scott Neal, ten, Steve Nemeth, eleven, Tom Plummer, fourteen, Gary Cox, seventeen, Robbie Saunders, eighteen, Tim Cranston, twenty, Andy Donald, twenty-one, Mark Mackey, twenty-two, Phil Lee, Les Milley wears twenty-three, and Ron Shudra, 26. For the Seahawks, Gavin De Jong, 2, Mike Bishop, 4, Lee Barley, 5, Paul Simpson, 6, Stuart Carville, 7, Sean Johnson, three of the Johnson brothers all playing in this game. He wears 8, 9 is Aaron Byrne, Stephen Johnson, the captain, wears 10, Anthony Johnson, 12, Chris Hobson, 14, Dale Lambert, 18, Andy Steele, 19, Frank Killen, 20. Danny Parkin, 21. 22 is Kevin McNaught. Dan Dorian, who missed out on the first two games, is back in for the third one. So the Yorkshire Cup, third game, and the decider between the Sheffield Steelers and the Humberside Seahawks. 5-4 to the Hull base side in the first game. 9-4 to the Steelers when the two sides met at the Sheffield Arena. The third and deciding game being played in front of the biggest audience in the country. On a Tuesday night, there's a good six or six and a half thousand crammed into the Sheffield Arena for the deciding game in the Yorkshire Cup. An important addition to the Humberside Seahawks side who wasn't in either of the two games previously played, Dan Dorian, the man to watch for the Humberside Seahawks wearing number 27. The first face-off in the Humberside Seahawks end. Stephen Johnson contesting it for the Seahawks up against Steve Nemeth and wins it. Dale Lambert now for the Seahawks tries to play it along the boards. It'll be cleaned up by Mike Bishop behind his own net, trying to set up the play. Dorian moving out to right wing, and he now picks up on it. Tries to carry it through the middle. Got Stephen Johnson waiting for the pass on left wing. Ron Shudra clears for the Steelers. Play back in, though. Danger man Stephen Johnson out in front of net. Couldn't get the touch on it. Played back in by Bishop. But the first call of the game is seen by referee Ken Taggart. And there'll be a man from either side making their way to the penalty box. Ron Shudra is the man who goes for the Sheffield Steelers, and Dan Dorian goes for the Humberside Seahawks. Five minutes and 13 to be precise, elapsed so far in this first period. 5-4 victory to the Seahawks when the two sides first met a fortnight ago. And then in the second game at the arena, they paid it back with interest, did the Steelers. 9-4 the victory that night. But it's all to play for tonight. Shudra shovels it through to Plummer. Plummer's got Cranston arriving in the middle. Cranston's there, fans on it. So too does Scott Neal. Kevin McNaught straight into the stick of uh, Scott Neal. Unlucky not to make something of that. And uh, McNaught now gets it back over halfway. Thinks about the shot, holds onto it, tries to round Paul Dixon. Unable to, but will get it back from behind the net. Across the face of net. Nobody with a black shirt able to get the finishing touch on that one. Sean Johnson. Paul Simpson. Ken Taggart, the referee, nearly getting involved. Just tries to elude that pass. Now, Cranston has got Scott Neal arriving for the pass. Neal arrives. Neal shot wide on the left-hand pipe of Brian Cox. And that one again is trapped in the side netting for the best chance so far for the Sheffield Steelers. Yes, Sheffield very unlucky there. Tim came down the left wing, saw Scotty Neal bursting through the middle, gave him a nice pass over the stick of the defenceman, and Scott was unlucky just to shovel it into the side of the net. Yes, as you can see, Tim's coming down the left. He's looking, looking as he's coming down. Scotty's breaking down the right wing. Little chip over the defenceman's stick. 
Very unlucky with a one-time shot. Six minutes and 12 seconds gone in the first period at the Sheffield Arena. And the side second in Heineken First Division against the side fifth in the Heineken Premier League. There's a, a league separating these two sides, but the standard is there for all to see. It's much tighter than that. And in their own building, you'd probably fancy the Steelers to win it at the third time of asking. Chudra, Phil Lee. Lee dumps it in for somebody to chase. Instead, of the rebound will come back to the stick of Dale Lambert. Very careless pass across to Les Milley. Milley couldn't do anything with it. And in fact, in the end, they're lucky that it's turned around again with Dorian. Dorian shot! And it eludes the right-hand pad of Andy Donald. And is in the back of the net as he turned around to see it there. 6-33, and Humberside Seahawks take the lead. Yes, you just can't give Dan Dorian that kind of room. You see, he takes it, he's flying through the neutral zone. He pulls Shudra to his right-hand side. Just comes round, running, puts a lovely shot low into the right-hand post of Andy Donald. Yep. Andy Donald could just look despairingly at that one, launched past him by one of the men with the hardest shots in the country, certainly in the Premier League, Dan Dorian, who's been injured for the previous two encounters between these two sides, and obviously feels he has a point to prove, not only to the Humberside Seahawks, but also to his former coach, Alex Dampier, who had him at Nottingham Panthers for a season and a half and then released him. But the last thing Alex Dampier did before he came to the Sheffield Steelers was release Dan Dorian. So I'm sure he feels that he has a point to prove in this game, and he's uh, certainly proved it early stages of this game with the first score, Dan Dorian. Kevin McNaught against Scott Neal, two Great Britain players facing each other across the face-off circle. And again, it's McNaught who comes up with it. Winning most of the face-offs in the early part of this game are the Seahawks. Shot now from Shudra. Rebound back to Plummer. Shot from Scott Neal. Number one for the Seahawks is now cancelled out by number one for the Sheffield Steelers. Ten minutes and 25 gone. Scott Neal puts him on the board. It's a good pass from Mark Mackey down to Ron Shudra on the point. He lets a quick wrist shot go. The goalie deflects it out. It's bouncing in between Tommy Plummer and Scotty Neal. And Scott, Scotty Neal doesn't miss a lot from that, uh, that range and shovels it in nicely. So 1-1, one, one. and the game could now come to life. Here's Scott Neal with a chance of his second of the evening. Runs the keeper, is it in? And in the space of 15 seconds, Steelers have gone from being a goal behind to being one in front. Steelers 2, Seahawks 1. Scotty Neal gets a great breakaway from the centre there, shovels it into the goal, his pads and Ronnie Wood's following up and manages to just poke it in the corner. Great goal by Ronnie Wood. Mackey tied on the boards on left wing. Nemeth in there as well. Mackey will come up with it again. Need support arriving in the centre. Held off the play, held into the boards by Dale Lambert. Comes to Les Milley. Good interception there by the Humberside defence in the shape of Mike Bishop clearing their lines well but it's only a temporary respite I think Dixon looks for Nemeth finds Millie now Mackey held off the plate in the corner by Mike Bishop there's Millie's shot well how that sneak through I don't even think Brian Cox has any idea but Les Millie won't care how it got through how it comes because the scoreboard now reads, Sheffield Steelers 3, Humberside Seahawks 1. Yes, Les Milley got one of the best snapshots in the game. He comes in on the right there and just lets it go straight over the top, left-hand shoulder of Brian Cox. Well, that's brought the old uh, woo-woos from the Sheffield Steelers supporters who are responding in kind to an amazing comeback by their side. Three goals in the space of one minute and 55 seconds has put a completely different complexion on this game now. Les Milley getting the goal to add to the ones earlier on from Scott Neal and from Ronnie Wood. Dan Dorian scoring the first goal for the Humberside Seahawks, but since then it's been all Sheffield Steelers pressure. Perhaps that's what they were looking for to get them back in the game. No icing call, even though Brian Cox was looking for it. Andy Steele, head down, tries to play it into the path 
of somebody with a Humberside Seahawks shirt, but the pass is just going astray at the moment. Tommy Plummer. Paul Dixon on defence. Tries to play it through to Tim Cranston. Bit of a misunderstanding there as Dixon clears it down the ice. Tommy Plummer has it, but not for long. Gives it up, threaded through. A steal, shot comes in. Long-range effort, which uh, no problems in dealing with from the Carvo shot by Andy Donald. Now Cranston. Pass was intended for Steve Nemeth. He couldn't quite get there, but they still have possession temporarily at least. McNaught, Plummer. Plummer takes his man down to the ice. McNaught, in the meantime, gets the shot away. Rebound comes back to Carville. Carville's shot goes over the goal, over the plexiglass, and rolls quite a few feet behind the backboards. So there'll be a face-off just inside the blue line to the right of Andy Donald's goal. We've had 13 minutes and 35 seconds in the first period. Sheffield Steelers 3, Humberside Seahawks 1. They won it again on the face of eventually. That man Dorian again looking for Stephen Johnson out in front of net. Hand pass though, which was not spotted from Phil Lee. Bishop out in front is Stephen Johnson looking for that pass across from Anthony Johnson. As it goes back to Mark Mackey for the Steelers. Little drop pass looking for Nemeth to let one go. Thought about it, delayed on it, and instead it was Dorian doing some cleaning up back in his own end. Stephen Johnson, Anthony Johnson looking for the return. Stephen Johnson shot! There wasn't much room for that one to sneak through, but it managed to get through. Andy Donald looked to have that one covered, but there was a little gap just open up to the right of him, and Stephen Johnson buried it, like this. Yes, a good goal by Stephen Johnson. He wasn't given a lot of room there. He took it in well, a bit of slap marking from Sheffield, and just squeezed it in between Andy Donald's leg and the post. A good goal. So, 3-2. Makes it interesting, this game's going to be tight and competitive surely all the way through. Not much to choose between these two teams. Nowhere to go at the moment, he's shepherded off the puck by Sean Johnson. Which gives Dan Dorian a chance to set Andy Steele on his way. Steele shot, missing the right-hand pipe. Dorian again, in a battle for the puck with Paul Dixon. Scott Neal. Just to play it through to Tim Cranston. Now, see what Tommy Plummer can do. Waiting around for it to come back to a stick. Cranston there as well. Now the Seahawks make their way down the ice in the shape of Dan Doran. He might just do it all himself. He's looking to do that. What a great goal. Got a bit of help from Andy Donald on route. But that's a great individual goal from the Humberside Seahawks. That ties it up at three. 1.21 remaining in the first period. Again, Dan Dorian brings it deep from his own end. Takes Schroeder to his right. I mean, because he's going through the neutral zone, no one's slowing him down. And a, a near on identical shot from the same point again. Last face off of the first period. Looks like Bing with Scott Neal trying to win it. Shot coming through from Cranston. Dixon on the turn. Bishop. The Humberside Seahawks clears it down the ice. And before Ron Schroeder gets to touch the puck. The 20 minutes of play have elapsed and you can't split these two after the first period. And the Premier League side and the First Division side are locked at three goals apiece. Still very much anybody's game all to play for in the Yorkshire Cup. Third match between the Sheffield Steelers and the Humberside Seahawks. 3-3 after 20 minutes play. It's been all action. Can they keep the pace up for another 40? I doubt it very much indeed. But uh, Sheffield Steelers' best hopes of winning this game have to be keeping Dan Dorian quiet, the man who missed out on the first two matches between these sides. And is more than made up for it in the early exchanges in this game and shown what a danger man he can be. And I know that Great Britain and Sheffield Steelers coach Alex Stampier is fully well aware of what he can do and probably quite well aware of what they can do as well. Dorian against Nemeth in the face-off circle. And it's Humberside who win it. It'll come back in their direction now from Shudra. Playing it through to Mackey. 
Mackey takes it over the blue line, rounds the challenge of Dale Lambert. Still has it, but then just gives it to Bishop on the end of his stick. Danger man Dorian looking to make a break, but here's Mackey again across the face, and Les Melly slots it home for number four, and his second of the night. Five minutes and 13 seconds gone in the second period. It's Steelers four, Seahawks three. Yes, Mark Mackey does well, takes it out the corner, sees Les flying through in the slot, and Les one times it straight to the roof of the net. Ken Taggart restarts play with the Steelers 4-3 up. Les Millie's second of the night, putting the home side in front again, but they were 3-1 up and gave up the advantage. Can they hold on to it this time? Making his way down the ice, it's Dan Dorian who gets upended by Mark Mackey. It's a hooking call on Mark Mackey. So for the first time in the game tonight, It'll be the Sheffield Steelers who are a man short. Mackey makes his way to the bench. And that means Humberside will have a two-minute advantage. Mackey gone for that hooking call. Five on four situation now. And this really is the platform for that man, Dan Dorian, to make something happen. First of all, he has to win the face-off against Steve Nemeth. Just inside the Humberside Seahawks half, Nemeth gets it eventually and will now try and control it to ease the pressure and work down the clock. Dixon's long shot will dump more to the point because he wants to waste a few seconds. Nemeth's shot. Cox equal to it. Gets his stick there. It's trapped in the netting behind the goal, but uh, Daryl Lambert managed to extricate it from there. Anthony Johnson. Dan Dorian. Got plenty of time on the puck. They're allowing him plenty of time, plenty of space. If he unleashes a shot, Andy Donald knows it's going to be pretty accurate too. Dorian. Bishop. Dorian again. Still on the puck. Gets it back to Bishop. Moves inside. Gets the shot away. Gets a deflection over the top of the Steelers' net. Played back in by Lambert. Comes back out, though, to a Sheffield Steelers stick. Steve Nemeth eases it down the ice. That means that Dale Lambert has to go and collect for the Seahawks. 55 seconds remaining on the power play for the men in black. Arounding everybody in his path there was Bishop. Finds Dorian. Lambert will let one go. He lets one go. Donald gets in between the shot and the goal. The rebound could have come anywhere. Good chance for Dorian to get a shot away. Wasted effort there for the Seahawks, but they still have over half a minute remaining with a man advantage. Dorian goes sprawling on the ice. Ken Taggart says that's going to be a hooking or a tripping call. We'll see what he decides to give, but it's going to mean that the Steelers lose Ron Shudra and another two-minute penalty. And the Steelers in a bit of trouble now on the ice with manpower, Paul Thompson. Yes, I think the Sheffield defence had to bring Dan... Dan down at that time would have been on the goal, but Dan knows what it takes, as you can see here. Dan knows what it takes to uh, get a penalty. He goes straight through the defenceman, gets a slash from Paul Dixon. He probably could have carried on, but he knew he'd draw the penalty and went down. So Dan Dorian is the man who picks up the penalty against him for the second time. Sees two Sheffield Steelers disappearing to the penalty box. So five on three for a while. For 22 seconds, Bishop, they really should make something of this now. Bishop waking back on the point. Bishop unleashes one. Gets a rebound off his own player, Stephen Johnson, and it'll come back again. But now the Steelers with Cranston on the breakaway. Cranston over the blue line. There's going to be a penalty even if he doesn't score. And as soon as the Humberside Seahawks player touches, it'll be a penalty awarded against... Mike Bishop, I think, is the man. In fact, uh, Dan Dorian is skating over towards the penalty box. Tim Cranston down on his haunches. And there'll be a two-minute penalty for the Humberside Seahawks, which has brought the crowd to their feet. And in fact, there's going to be two lots of two minutes. We'll see what happened there as Cranston goes down to the ice. Ken Taggart saw two offences there, so there will be... A very interesting situation, a three-on-three, three. and Paul Thompson, you don't see that too often. No, you don't. There's a lot of room out there for the players, especially at Sheffield, the big guys. I thought Tim Cranston did very well there. Uh, he could have gone down and tried to draw the penalty earlier on, but he went through and tried to carry on on goal. 
unfortunately, he didn't score, but a, a power play three on three. 12.34 remaining on this second period. A lot of discussion going on between Taggart and the Humberside Seahawks players. It will actually be a face-off on the far side. There was for a while there. The signals and the direction and the deliberation was unclear, but we can now settle the matter that Cranston will take the face-off against Dan Dorian. So both sides are playing with two men short, but Sheffield Steelers will return to four men right away, which gives them a man advantage, and they'll have uh, some substantial power play coming up very shortly now. They already have one man advantage, they could have two, but Dorian may make all that absolutely meaningless, and he does for his third goal of the night. Hat-trick for Dorian. Seahawks tied up on a short-handed play with seven minutes and 42 gone in the second period. It's 4-4. You would have thought Sheffield would have uh, learned their lesson with Dan Dorian. He burst through the middle again, no one on him, brings the puck down well. Just him on the goalie again, and he doesn't miss many of these. A quality player. moment nobody able to take control of it for very long to make a worthwhile and meaningful move Stephen Emmeth though has it that's a bit of skill from him but he hasn't gone very far so far still in line with his own goal Dixon through to Scott Neal now there's Stephen Emmeth who's dispossessed of the puck by Sean Johnson Sean Johnson and Paul Dixon and now a chance for Paul Simpson and a good stop by Andy Donald it was only really him who could save the day. Flops down on the puck and stops an opportunity for the Seahawks to score. 5.24 remaining in the second period. Yes, Steve Nemov should know better, really. He was the last man there. He coughed the puck up. And a good leg save by Andy Donnell. He got down to that well and smothered it. Still on a power play, the Humberside Seahawks. Still with that man advantage. Still with the danger man circling around the nets. Dan Dorian comes back, though, to Bishop. Bishop to McNaught. McNaught shot. Forrester bodies to get through, but they'll try again with Dorian. Dorian being forced out of the play. Might have to take this over the blue line. Didn't, just kept it in, in fact. McNaught tries to slide it through to Stephen Johnson. The danger still not averted for the Steelers. Cranston through to Paul Dixon. Takes a little drop pass for Steve Nemeth. Looks to let one go, instead gives it to Scott Neal, who wasn't ready for it. Ron Shudra takes it back into his own end of the ice. 43 seconds remaining on the power play. 43 seconds before Tommy Plummer can return to the ice. No icing call, they're a man short. Steve Nemeth looking to pick up on that one. Mike Bishop just beating him to the puck. Oh, a little backhand flip by Nemeth, which uh, caused Brian Cox a few anxious moments. Could have been another short-handed goal. As it is, Dorian brings it away down the other end. Paul Dixon takes him down to the ice. Steve Nemeth clears it around the boards, and they'll have to clear their lines because that's going to trickle all the way back down to the Humberside end. Last 10 seconds of the power play. Sean Johnson nearly coughs it up for Mark Mackey. A bit of a battle. Stephen Johnson arrives to support. Boomer coming in from Shudra. Into the body of Brian Cox, who got down to it well. Shudra tries again, sliding it wide of the right-hand pad of Brian Cox. Again, he was there in position to stop it trickling through. Nemeth in a battle, a real old battle with uh, Sean Johnson to win this one. He might do eventually. Gives it to Mackey. Mackey arriving in the centre. It's Paul Dixon. Paul Dixon on the reverse. And then Tommy Plummer picks up on the rebound of Brian Cox. Sluts it home past the despairing humber side, Seahawks netminder. And when the two sides are back to full strength, it's the Steelers who get in front. 5-4, 51 seconds remaining on the period. Some superb work on the boards by Steve Nemeth. Mark Mackey finds <coughs> flies it across the front of the goal. It's actually given to Mark Mackey that goal in the end. Seemed to be that Tommy Plummer had got the last touch, but uh, the goal is credited in that scramble to Mark Mackey. Whatever, Steelers lead by 5-4, and there are 42 seconds remaining on the game, or remaining on this period at least, with another 20 to come after that. There's Millie. Plays it in around the boards. This could be the last action of the second period. Shudra. Oh, nearly a tip in by Scott Neal from that shot. 
The deflection from Scott Neal, nearly wrong footing Brian Cox as it is, Humberside come away with it. Battling performance by the Steelers down their own end at the moment. Steve Nemeth brings it away. Got Shudra arriving as the ball on left wing. The rebound comes back to Shudra on the follow-up. There is it in the left-hand corner of the net. Pass a despairing Brian Cox. And towards the end of the second period, the Steelers have opened up a two-goal advantage. Steelers six, Seahawks four. Yes, Steve Nemeth skating in with the puck. Takes the shot just over the blue. Goalkeeper sounds well. Ron Shudra follows the shot in, hits it first time under the goalkeeper. So, just four seconds remaining on the second period. Phil Lee with the last shot of the second period. 40 minutes of ice hockey at the Sheffield Arena in the Yorkshire Cup third game. The decider has elapsed. And the Steelers have taken a two-goal advantage. They're in front, but still too close to call. Sheffield Steelers six, Homicide Seahawks four. So the final period of 18 that have been played between these two sides in the space of two weeks. The third game in the Yorkshire and Humberside Cup Series. And a chance for a wraparound goal from Mackey, but it's put away by Steve Nemeth. 13 seconds into the third period, and the Steelers open up a three-goal cushion over the Seahawks. It's Steelers seven, Seahawks four. Yeah, Mark Mackey's coming behind the net, tries the wraparound, comes off the goalie's pads. No one's picking up Steve Nemeth, coming up from the high slot and pops it into the back of there. A good early goal for Sheffield Steelers. Steelers try and clear with Phil Lee through to Tommy Plummer in turn finds the stick of Tim Cranston but again a bit too eager on the play Steelers called offside and we're going through a bit of a scrappy period of play at the moment with the Steelers just happy to hold on to their three goal advantage and the Seahawks unable to make anything meaningful happen in terms of possession down the other end of the ice a lot of it revolving around that man, Mike Bishop, a colossus. He's strong in defence, pretty powerful when he moves forward as well. There's Anthony Johnson. Slipped through for Stephen Johnson. Got his uh, fellow number 10, or the opposite number 10, marking him. Stephen Emmeth comes out with it. Millie in support. Millie brought down to the ice. It is a cooking call. It's going to be made. And uh, Stephen Johnson knows it. Doesn't want to look at the referee's signal, but uh, the Humberside Seahawks number 10 are judged to have upended Les Millie. So if the Seahawks haven't got enough problems already, they now face a two-minute power play with 15.49 remaining on the game. Yes, a good call there by the referee. As you can see, Les moving through the middle and Stephen Johnson just pulls him from behind. So a five on four situation opening up for the Sheffield Steelers. They already have uh, a sizable margin over their Premier League rivals. 7-4. There's Bishop. I want to elude the despairing lunge with the stick of Ron Shudra and is met by Andy Donald. There's Steve Nemeth. Now, slow but sure. Build up by Shudra. Holds it up. Gives it to Scott Neal. There's Millie in good position in front of net. Can't reach him this time. In fact, the puck is given up to the stick of Dale Lambert for the Seahawks. Try and play down the ice. Anthony Johnson meets the full force of Ron Shudra coming the other direction. Scott Neal around the back of the net. Here it comes to the stick of Shudra. There's Millie. Plays it to Scott Neal. Making room for himself, making room for the angled pass across the face to Tim Cranston, who couldn't do anything with it this time. We'll try and get it back. But it's still a bit of ice opening up now for the Humberside Seahawks. It's that man, Dorian, again, little wrist shot, which Andy Donald is in good position to stop. Plays it out to the Humberside, away from the Humberside Seahawks forwards, to a Sheffield Steelers defenseman. The big man, Ron Shudra, tries to work his way inside the Humberside Seahawks defence and does it to great effect. And the Sheffield Steelers have made their power play count. 44 seconds still to go on it. 
and the Steelers now open up a four-goal margin. It's Steelers eight, Seahawks four. Yes, Ron effortlessly brings the puck in. No homicide player comes towards him. He takes it round the outside on his favourite side and slips a good hard low shot into the corner of the net. Doesn't give the goalie any chance at all. The winner play by Phil Lee, stopping Dorian making a move in on net. 13 minutes and 50 remaining. Millie, rink wide pass, comes back to him on the end of his stick, looks to do something with it to Mackey. Shot into the pads of Brian Cox by Les Millie. Can't get it through this time. Stephen Johnson has it. Support arriving from Dorian. Dorian shot. Overbalancing goes Annie Doll just manages to keep it out. A lot of force in that shot. Tommy Plummer skating like a, a whirling dervish up the end of the ice. But uh, can't do anything about setting up a goal-scoring opportunity for the Steelers this time. So they may have another opportunity as Paul Dixon sprays a pass wide to Phil Lee. He has to go to collect. Phil Lee moving well up the ice, finds Plummer. Good pass to Plummer on the end of his stick. Scott Neal's arriving, so too. There's a chance for Tim Cranston, but instead he pulls away from the play to allow the shot to come through, which uh, Brian Cox saw, was in good position for. Now Bishop rounds two markers, gets the shot away first time, gets the shot away second time, and thought it would trickle into the net. Instead, it only trickled into the netting at the side of the net and behind. So the Seahawks, certainly those in close proximity, thought they'd score the fifth. Haven't, as we'll see now. Yes, a big rush there from the big defenseman, Mike Bishop. Big, strong lad, comes outside of Phil. Phil Lee coming in on goal. Deeks inside of the other defenseman, Paul Dixon, very unlucky with the shot. I think Andy uh, Donald might have got his mitt on that and tries to follow up on the rebound and hits the puck into the back of the net. The back of the net, not into the net. That's why it didn't count as uh, Seahawks number five, because it uh, landed just to the side and back of the net rather than actually lodging itself over the line and past Andy Donald. Bishop will try again, though. He's worked well, worked hard. We've had a great deal of reward in this game so far. A lot of the things in the Humberside Seahawks team centre around him. And when he's firing, they certainly have a chance, but they've got a lot to do. 12-26 remaining in the third period. Steelers with a, a big gap opened up. Four goals they lead. And at the moment, no signs of the Seahawks making much of a charge to get back in this game. Perhaps that'll all change now with McNaught. Dumping it in for Andy Steele to chase. Ron Schudera will get there first. Mackey. Mackey has Millie crossing over with him. Mackey tries to get a shot away. 4-1. Tame one didn't get the full connection on that. Shooter up. Dorian back in his own end of the ice. Him and Lambert have a little conversation. Lambert says, I'll take that and feed you, which he does. Feeds him badly, though. Mackey now is back to goal, though. Couldn't do anything about turning around to get that one in. Brian Cox makes a bit of a meal of saving that one. Parries it. Doesn't save it. The puck finds its way all the way back down to the other end where Shooter does a bit of cleaning up. Now Millie. Millie looking for his third of the night. Can he get around Cox? He can't. And uh, in the process, with a challenge from Lambert, takes the goal off its moorings. 11.30 remaining on the third period. And it's still 8-4. Yes, again, some nice play from Les Millie. Puts the Jets on, goes round Dale Lambert. Dale does well to knock him off balance. And a good save by the goalie. So a bit of reparation to be done by Linesman Carson to get the goal back in position. And a face-off will take place. Looks like Les Millie might have got injured in that challenge by Dale Lambert, moving rather gingerly to the Sheffield Steelers bench. And if he's missing for the rest of the action in this game, that could be an important man lost for the Steelers and something that the Humberside Seahawks may be able to capitalise on. They're down the Steelers' end of the ice at the moment, but not for long because they're trying to bring it out through Scott Neal. Stephen Johnson into the path of uh, Sean Johnson. And Sean Johnson on the turn, pokes it home. Ron Shooter standing guard on the line, but all a little bit too late. 11-11 on the third period remaining. The Seahawks close the gap to three. Yeah, all three Johnson brothers involved in this move. Sean Johnson takes that well off his, uh, off his glove and slips it under Andy Donald. Sheffield should really tighten up. 
They don't have to score any more goals to win this game, but obviously they don't, they don't want to let any more in. And that's the first Seahawks goal for over 20 minutes. They were level at uh, three apiece at the end of the first period, but they've only scored one goal since then, before that goal that's just gone in, but they are back to within three. See if that fires them up. Perhaps it will. Certainly firing the belly of Anthony Johnson, who tries to set brother Stephen on his way. The ricochet comes back off the skate to Phil Lee. Slides it through, no icing call made. I don't think the Steelers were aware of that fact. They just pulled away, thinking it was going to be. Stephen Johnson, Ron Shudra, lifts it in the direction of the Humberside Seahawks net, in line with net. Played back to Stephen Johnson. Johnson, back off the backboards, with Sean moving through the middle. And there's Anthony, the Johnson trio. As it could be a, a, a jazz group, but they're actually three Great Britain and Humberside Seahawks ice hockey players, and very good they are too. And Sean Johnson looking for number two of the night, and he slots it out of the body of Andy Doyle. Now that makes it interesting, that really does open up the game, because the Steelers have given up two goals in very quick succession. The Seahawks are back in with a sniff of taking the Yorkshire and Humberside Cup. It's 8-6 to the Steelers. Some scrappy defensive play again by Sheffield. Phil dunks down the elder of the Johnson brothers there. The puck doesn't bounce nicely for Ron Schroeder, which he should have cleared. And there was Sean Johnson again unmarked in front of the net to shovel a goal past Andy Donald. Schroeder. Finds Dixon. Into your space. Millie waiting for the pass on right wing. Gets it. Dixon arriving in support now with Mackey just behind the play. Millie plays it through. But again, the Humberside Seahawks defence are equal to what Sheffield Steelers are throwing in their direction at the moment. Bishop and Dixon having a little exchange. Bishop coming up with it now. There's a lot of room for Bishop to move. If he can get a favourable rebound back off the stick of Les Millie, he was in there. And that would have reduced the arrears if he managed to convert it to just one. He still could. But Mark Mackey now has it for the Steelers as play turns around again, tries to slide it through to Nemeth, gets it, a little rebound off his skate. Les Millie arrives, and the shot was on target. Bounced off the chest of Brian Cox, who seemed to have it, and then released it, but the referee couldn't see that and has blown for another face-off. Unlucky there for Sheffield. Steve Nemeth just slips off the stick of Andy Steele. Sees Les Millie coming on the back post. I think the defenseman's going to get it. Les one times it, and a good save. A very good save from the goalkeeper. There's Kevin McNaught. Into the path of that man again, Dorian tries to slip the pass in for McNaught. Nice little one-two, but didn't quite reach him. And the Steelers will be glad it didn't. Shooter having to chase back down his own end now. A lot of pressure coming in the direction of the Sheffield Steelers' goal. And they're unable to clear it over their own blue line. Perhaps they will now with Shooter up. Shooter decides a little uh, lifted pass in the direction of the Humberside Seahawks' goal. Might not go amiss, just to relieve the pressure. Dixon shoots it in. Cannons around the backboards, looking for the stick of Mackey. That was Les Millie arriving in the centre, unable to turn and get the shot away. Bishop, back it comes to Dorian, trickles over his stick. Now Tommy Palmer bits it up on halfway, he's only got the goalie to beat. Can he do it? He can. Six minutes and 39 to go in this Yorkshire and Humberside Cup. Steelers lead 9-6. A great Steve. Tommy Victor takes it over the blue. Two defensemen coming in on him. Hasn't got a lot of time. And fires a hard slap shot straight through the 5 0 Interference the call made on Mark Mackey. So five on four now, with the Steelers having four men, four out players as opposed to Humberside's five. And two minute power play, of which 15 seconds has already elapsed. And the top line out there for the Seahawks, with the Johnson sniffing around, Dan Dorian there as well. Dale Lambert will have to go and collect back on defense. Haven't made anything of this man advantage so far, but perhaps they will now through Dorian. Three he scored so far, looking for his fourth of the night. Doing it all by himself, back it comes to Lambert. Lambert tries to 
played in the direction of a Humberside Seahawks player who was waiting for the pass. That player would have been Stephen Johnson, but instead Cranston buries it in the back of the net. Cox is frustrated, Cox is annoyed. Cranston is elated because it's another short-handed goal and the Steelers bring up double figures. Steelers 10, Seahawks 6. Yes, the Seahawks trying to throw him forward to bring the game back. Tim Cranston picks the puck up, fakes the pass to Ron Schroeder and fires it again straight through the five hole of Cox. Simpson, Simpson gets taken into the boards by Tommy Plummer. Simpson has it again. Rink wide pass where he finds Carville. Carville tries to get himself inside the Steelers' defence, gives it to Sean Johnson, arriving on hand for the shot was Dorian, but Donald blocks it well, and the Steelers come away with Nemeth. Nemeth might do this all by himself, a little flip pass to Shudra. He eventually ends up on the stick of Scott Neal, who uh, was forced wide and forced by, a little bit of a to-do going on on the blue line. Shudra's involved, Ronnie Wood's in there too. We could have a bit of a bundle here. Shooter is trying to wrestle the shirt off the Humberside Seahawks player, whose number disappears from view. I think that's uh, Sean Johnson under there. Looks like they're dancing at the moment. Crowd on their feet. Probably worth trying to take. That's Sean Johnson there. Johnson goes in to see what's happening. Shooter has pulled away. And he will not be seeing any more of this game because there's only 124 remaining and Shudra will make his way into the box. And the man who was having the battle with was Paul Simpson. Anthony Johnson says a few words to Shudra who says, take me on if you want. I'm game, we won the game. 124, and there's no way you can see the Seahawks getting even close to the Steelers at this stage. But Sean Johnson, Paul Simpson for the Humberside Seahawks. And Ron Shudra for the Sheffield Steelers will play no further part in this game. They've all been awarded two minutes. Some penalties being handed out. Six minutes in total for Ron Shudra, but it's not really going to matter at this stage. Got two plus two plus two. And a similar penalty is being awarded for Humberside. Last chance, perhaps, last gasp, shot, goal, opportunity. Setting itself up for Anthony Johnson. Can't make anything of it this time. And former Durham Wasp and Humberside Seahawks colleague Paul Dixon robs him of the puck. Now Steve Nemeth, we're into the last minute of the game. Can he put the guilt on the gingerbread? Put the icing on the cake. Cranston might. Lifts that one over the net. Chance of number two for him and number 11 for the Steelers squandered. Last 45 seconds, Anthony Johnson all on his own at the moment, needs some help. Dorian arriving, but he's pushed still further wide by Phil Lee and by Tim Cranston. We're holding him in the corner. Mike Bishop, back to Dorian. Not going to do anything from that range, but maybe Phil Lee could. He's only got Dorian to beat. Can't round Dorian, does a good bit of defensive work for a forward. Through the middle for Cranston. Last 15 seconds, you'll hear the crowd count down the seconds as we eke towards the end of the game. Last shot of the game, surely from Nemeth. Intercepted, breakaway from Bishop, but he's not going to have long enough to take this one, is he? Three seconds, two seconds, no. And anyway, Dole gets the deflection to force him further wide. And that's the end of the Yorkshire Cup. Three games play between the Premier League Humberside Seahawks and the First Division Sheffield Steelers. 5-4 to the Seahawks in the first, 9-4 to the Steelers in the second. No doubting who came out the better side in the last two games, because in game number three, played at the Sheffield Arena, in front of a crowd of around 6,000, the Sheffield Steelers have come out victorious by a sizable margin over their higher-ranked neighbours. Sheffield Steelers 10, Humberside Seahawks 6. So the Yorkshire Cup is going to be presented to the Sheffield Sealers. Humberside Seahawks look rather crestfallen, as you might imagine they would, after that sort of defeat. Sheffield Steelers will get the cup, and it will be collected by the man who's going to hold it aloft Captain Ron Shudra. That's for the cameras. 
and for the fans. I think he's quite happy with that, and so he should be. David Gardner-Brown, the man who is managing director of the Steelers, has a word with Stu Dreyer, who holds the trophy aloft. Good night's work done. David Gardner-Brown says, take it and show it. Show it to the players, show it to the fans who've been there to acclaim your performance tonight. Big smile all over Big Ron's face, showing Scott Neal and Andy Donald what they've just won. Dan, at one point I thought you were going to win that game single-handedly for the Seahawks. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it was 3-3 and uh, we got out to a good start and so did um, uh, Sheffield. So you know, it went well and, uh, you know, we tried our best, but unfortunately uh, we lost. Now, you missed out on the first two games. Did you feel you had a point to prove tonight? Well, I mean, not me personally. I mean, um, you know, it's the coach's uh, choice whether I play or not. And uh, I hurt my shoulder a couple weeks ago, so he, he wanted me to sit out and he wanted me to get back in the lineup tonight, so that's why I played. How agonizing has it been for you sitting on the sidelines watching the team play and not being able to do anything about it? Well, it's very frustrating because, I mean, you know, I want to contribute as much as I can to the team, but, uh, you know, being injured is, uh, is frustrating and uh, I can't get out there and help the team. Were you fully fit tonight? No, not really, because, I mean, there's not much you can do off the ice that is the same as conditioning on the ice. So, I mean, it'll take me a couple of games to get back into shape, but, I mean, I felt pretty good tonight. Because it comes down to conditioning, doesn't it? You went out blazing in the first period. Did you feel that perhaps you went a bit too quick in the first period? Yeah, I might have went out a bit, but I'm always a, st a fast starter. So, I mean, uh, I went out quick and uh, I got a little tired, but, you know, we play eight guys. We got two lines, so, I mean, uh, some other teams have a little more players, but we have to go what we, get, what, what, what we got. Has it got the impression you rather enjoyed that game tonight? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, playing in the first division and then coming and playing against the Heineken team, it was really good. I mean, I was actually thinking to myself before we played against Humberside, I mean, what kind of shape I would be in for Premier League hockey after being in the first division for quite a number of years. And actually, I don't find it that hard. We've got a really good team. The team played really well tonight, I thought. As a unit, I don't think you could single out anybody that actually had an outstanding game because I think we really won it with teamwork tonight. Anybody who'd walked into the rink who didn't know anything about ice hockey, watched the two teams, would have thought tonight that you were the Premier Division team? Yeah, I mean, well, we played the style of hockey, really, we've been trying to play all year, as, as play it down low behind the net, uh, really dump and chase, really make their defencemen skate, try and tire them out because they're playing quite a lot of ice time. So really that was our main plan, we've been trying to work and working it down low and we've get, given a lot of teams a few problems that way. Alex, how does that performance rate amongst the others that you've had since you took over the team? Well, because it was a trophy, uh, Bob, I think it was probably the real highlight of the season so far. It's, it, it's real nice to get the crowd support behind us and uh, I come up with some silverware. I think everybody enjoyed that part of it. A little bit worried perhaps early on that Dan Dorian might steal the show? Well, you know, he's the type of player, he, uh, when he gets the puck, he can do some damage. I think our, uh, our defense reacted quite well after the first period. He did it some damage and... Uh, you know, we coped with it, and the uh, third period became good. Great team performance, everybody working hard right throughout the 60 minutes. Yeah. Team performances haven't really been the problem this year. We, we've, uh, everybody's working hard. It's just sometimes around the net we're not scoring. Like tonight we scored nine goals. Some nights we'd work that hard and only score four. Uh, it's not the lack of effort. It's just the lack of uh, probably scoring consistency. My, uh, ten goals in the game and uh, I think seven different scorers. Yeah, that's the other good thing. We're, we're getting a lot more out of certain guys. Uh, Scott Neal's been scoring pretty regular, but it was good to see Tommy Plummer and, and uh, Les Milley back in, in the frame. And, uh, of course, Steve Nemeth's always scoring. He's a pretty uh, consistent type of guy when it comes to scoring goals. A lot of people underestimate the work rate of some of the players. Tommy Plummer, in particular, gives you 101% every time, whether you're losing, drawing, or whatever. Well, you look at the whole team, and <clears throat> there's no real uh, individual stars as such. You know, of course, your imports stand out a bit. But everybody works, and uh, including the imports, everybody works very hard. And I think if you've got uh, the guys that are supposed to be your best players working hard, it rubs off on, on the guys that are uh, sort of your role players. How much can you read into these performances in terms of what you could achieve in the Premier League next year? Well, I think we'd have to uh, strengthen to a degree, mainly because if tomorrow we had a real tough game, we don't have the depth just now to, to cope with another hard performance tomorrow. Uh, Humberside could probably ice three lines, and we'd struggle just now to put together three lines. Were you surprised the way it turned out? Not really, no. I, I expected a very tight game. Uh, actually, I think it was probably a little tighter than what the scoreline suggested. We got some good breaks, and uh, when we did, we, we buried them.
right, nice to get a bit of silverware in the cabinet, what, two months after you joined the club? Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. I, it's sort of unexpected, really. I thought we were just fighting our way through for uh, playoffs and trying to get into the Premier League. But uh, this is a nice, pleasant surprise. And uh, Peter Johnson, an old friend of mine, uh, I sort of got one over on him here. He won't like it, but I'm sure you'll get one back on me eventually.